Welcome to octopus art. Hmm, today we're going to go to the ocean. Let's see what we find. People have been creating octopus art for a long time. Can you see the octopus on this Greek vase? Experts believe that it was created over 3,500 years ago. This painting was created by Wyland. He's an artist from Los Angeles. Do you notice the circular tentacles underneath the arms on the octopus? These are suction cups. They help the octopus to pick things up. They're kind of like octopus, octopus fingers. Is this happening in the daytime or the nighttime? How could you tell? Hmm. Wyland created this painting too. He's well known for painting the ocean. He created a foundation to help protect the ocean from pollution and overfishing. This painting was created by Mari Skullard. She's from Norway. Is this painting real or from the artist's imagination? Hmm, how do you know? Do you think it would be fun to live in that house? I do. This print was created by Crystal Smith. She's an artist from Canada. This octopus is covered in spots. Do you know what it is called when something repeats over and over again? So if we repeat spot, 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 in art, it would be called repetition. This painting was created by Melanie Hava. She is an Aboriginal artist. She's using repetition too. What two things is she repeating? It's easy to see all the different kinds of spots. Is there anything else that she repeats as well? Hmm, I don't know. This sculpture was made by Thomas Studios for the city of Laguna Beach. You can play on this piece of public art. Maybe if you're lucky, one day you'll get to go to Laguna Beach and play on it too. I think it would be fun to feel the tentacles. Did you know that octopi can paint? When a predator is chasing them, they can spray ink into the water. This makes them hard to see so they can get away. So this octopus just sprayed ink and is on the run. It's a great view of the underside of the octopus. You can see all of the tentacles underneath. How many legs are there? They have a few other artistic traits too. Can you see the octopus in this image? They can camouflage themselves by changing the color of their skin. This one made itself look like the ocean floor. No one can find it now. Sometimes they change colors to communicate with another octopus. What amazing colors. They are the artists of the ocean. Are you feeling inspired to create? We have seen so many amazing artworks. I think it's time for us to head to the drawing board. So to create our octopus today, you're going to need a set of oil pastels, watercolor pan, a black Sharpie marker, a pencil, a paintbrush, a dish with a little bit of water in it, and some salt, any kind of salt will do and a sheet of watercolor paper. So let's go ahead and begin. 
you're going to need your sheet of paper first and your pencil. Now the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in the head of the octopus. So it could go up in this corner, this corner, the bottom corner. You can choose which corner you want. I'm going to start up here, but once again, you're going to do what you want and you're going to make kind of a U shape up in the corner. Okay, so I've got kind of a U. Now, once I have that U made, I'm then gonna take and put almost like I'm doing parentheses. And this is gonna be the place for the octopus's eyes, okay? And if you want, you could put in some circle eyes. I put some little half circles for his eye shape. So now I have the head of my octopus. Now the legs can be a little bit tricky, but I have an, easy, uh, an easier way to do it that will help you out a little bit. So first we're gonna take and we're gonna curve out and curve out. Now inside of this curve, we're gonna come in, we don't wanna to go too close to our edges, we're gonna come over just a little ways and we're gonna make an upside down V. And then we want to try to see if we can fit in four upside down V's in there. And it's okay if they're not perfect. They can be a little bit different. Now these V's are going to be the spaces for our octopus, so or for our legs. So we're going to be putting our first leg here. And I'm going to take and I'm going to curve and I'm going to go off the page. Now you're welcome to do yours however you want. I'm going to go over to my next little spot here. Now the thing with octopus legs is they, the farther out they go, the skinnier they get. So see how it's wider here, and then it gets skinnier as you go along. And I think I wanna actually have my octopus leg curl back in. So if you wanna do a curl back in, you can just take and pretend almost like you're drawing. When you get back to your paper, you can take and make a curl. And then you've got to put in the other side. And this is gonna get skinnier and skinnier as you go. So it's fat here, it gets thinner, 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 thinner to the end. And we have one of our octopus legs now. Let's go ahead and put in leg number two. We're gonna to come to the other side of this V. Decide how you want that leg to go. And then you come to the side of the other one. Remember we start thick. And then we get thinner as we go along. If you want to have it curve back on, you can pretend that it's curving around. We have two legs. I'm going to go to my next one. I'm going to make that one curl around. And then I come to this side. Once again, I keep it fatter and then it gets skinnier and skinnier as I come to the tip. I have one, two, three legs. I've got to make some more. I come into my next space. And I make my next one. Now I have room for one more octopus leg up here. And I think I'm gonna make this one come curl back in. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh-oh, I need three more legs. Well, I have room for a leg right here, so I'm gonna come right into this crack and make another one. Oops, I made it a little bit thin. I can have it curl back in if I want to. It's very fun to have them come off the edges of the paper. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I wanna show you something a little bit tricky where you, um, can have them cross underneath. So I'm gonna show you right here. I have a nice space right here. This is gonna be leg number seven. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna draw the first part. And I'm actually gonna have it cross underneath this leg. I'm gonna hop over and have it continue over here, okay? So then I come into here. 
Oof, I'm kind of touching that leg a little bit. When I get to here, I have to hop. And that gives me leg number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I still need one more leg. Hmm. I think I'm going to put my last leg up over here. And I'm going to have it cross over. I'm going to come here. I'm going to hop. Okay, so now I have one octopus leg, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, my legs are kind of crazy. The next step is going to be to take my Sharpie marker and trace over all of my lines. Okay, so I have now gone ahead and traced all of my lines. My next step is going to be to take my water and my watercolor pan. I'm going to dip into my water and we're going to be painting our octopus with warm colors. So the warm colors are the colors, um, think of like fire and the sun. So we're going to be using red. So I'm going to take and put a little bit of red or water into my red one. We're going to use orange, so we'll put a drop of water into there. And we're going to use yellow, so I'm going to put a drop of water into there. Now, as I go ahead to go and paint, um, if I want, I could do a te the technique wet on wet, where I take and I first just take some water into my octopus. And I'm going to just do a little section at a time. So I'm going to just do this head part, so I make sure that it is um, uh, totally wet. Now I can come into one of my colors and see how the colors will just spread. So if I want to blend some colors, I can. So I'm going to use mostly reds and oranges. But I think some yellow might be nice too. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my octopus with warm colors. And if you decide to go a different route, you can. If you use warm colors on your octopus, and we're going to use cool colors in our background, we will get something called contrast. And we're going to talk more about that later. So now I first get it wet. I then take and put in some colors. If you go out a little bit, it won't matter. So I wet an entire leg. And then I can take my color in. And I'm going to just play with all three of my warm colors as I work today. I wet my next leg. Ooh, if you get little bits, don't forget about your little bits. Now at this point, I need to let my octopus completely dry. So this is a really great stopping point. And you can clean out your watercolor pans, you can clean out your water and your brush. So this is a great place to take a little break. For our next step, we're going to be adding in oil pastel spots onto our octopus. Now our octopus is all in warm colors. You remember we used red, orange, and yellow. For our spots, we're going to be using cool colors. So our cool colors, you want to think of grass, the sky. We're going to play with blues and purples 
and greens. These would all be cool colors. It's also nice to add in a little bit of white. So we're gonna go ahead and play with these cool colors in the beginning. So first I'm gonna go ahead and just start making some circles. I might make some of them going off of my octopus. I might make some smaller, I might make some bigger. And you might decide you wanna do something completely different and that is okay. So we're playing with oil pastels now on our octopus. And by using the cool colors, we're getting a lot of contrast. See how the blue really contrasts with the oranges? And contrast means to pop out. So it really lets them pop out. I think I'm gonna go around my eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take and put spots on them. Now I can also add in other colors or do some in different colors. It's completely and totally up to you. So see how you could take and do two colors in one, okay? And maybe you'll do it in just a few, it's your choice. You could color them in all the way if you want or leave them open. It can also be nice to go in and take in a little bit of white. The white can be kind of fun as well. So that's another option you can use. So go ahead and add spots into your octopus. So now my octopus is covered in spots. And do you remember when it's called when we repeat something over and over again? When we have a spot, 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 spot? If you guess repetition, you were correct. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to paint our background. Now as we go to paint our background, we're gonna be doing something a little bit special. We are going to use salt and water with our watercolors. Now, once again, we wanna keep making contrast. So our octopus is still mostly orange, yellow, and red. So we're gonna be using cool colors in our background. So we're gonna be using blue, green, and purple. So if you wanna dip into your water and just go ahead and put a little bit of, um, drops of water into those colors. You want them to start to be activated. Now to use the salt, which we're gonna be doing, we're gonna continue with our wet on wet um, method. So we wanna come up and we're gonna first just paint a section with water. Now my octopus is completely dry. I cannot do this if my octopus is not dry. If it is wet, then the, uh, my cool colors will run into my wet colors. I'm sorry, into my warm colors. So first I get my section wet, then I can choose which color I want. So this technique is called wet on wet because my paper is wet and my brush has very wet paint. Now if I wanted to, I could just use one color or if I wanna use other cool colors, I can too. I just clean my brush between colors. Maybe I wanna add in a little bit of green. And I think I would like to add in a little bit of purple. I clean my brush. I wipe it off on the side so it's not quite as wet. I wanna be able to mix my colors a little bit more now. And because my octopus is dry, it's not bleeding into my octopus, okay? Now the next step is to take a little bit of salt and sprinkle it in. So I take my salt and sprinkle it in and that's gonna give me a really amazing background. 
And I can see that I'm getting a little bit too much built up in this corner. I can um, squeeze all the water out of my brush and then I can touch it on there and see how it sucks up some of that water. Now I wanna let that section dry. And as that section dries, I can now go into my next section. So I get a little bit of water on my brush. I come to an area that I have not done yet and I first just get it wet. It's a little bit easier to see it now because there's a little bit of purple and blue in my water. So I get my paper wet. I brush my brush off. I can now go ahead and add in more, my colors. After I add in my colors, I'll add in a little bit of salt until I have done all of it. Now at this point I want to let my octopus completely dry. It's important if I go to move it that I don't tilt it because if I tilt it, the paint will run. So if I do need to pick it up, I'm gonna make sure I pick it up very, very flat like this and gently carry it to the drying rack. Now once it's completely dry, let me get a finished one. Once it's completely dry, then if I want, I can um, go in and add any more touch-ups of oil pastels. Um, I could add in some white into my eyes if I wanted to. I could color anything in, change my water if I wanted to. It's really up to me. And then you're gonna notice it has a lot of salt. So you can take your fingers and lightly go in and take off some of that salt. It's not gonna all come off, but some of it will so it won't be quite so messy. Now after you brush it with your finger, you're gonna take a sheet, or you can go right over the trash can, and then you're gonna take and tap it off. So you can see where the salt came off. And then you have your finished octopus. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you.